In this problem, it doesn't initially say whether the claim is the alternative or null hypothesis, and it actually could be either of those. But if we read down in the end here, um, we do see that it says the claim that the population proportion is not equal to. All the uh, options are going to go with that, so it will be similar to others where HA was the claim, and that's honestly usually the case um, when we do these tests. So going into our problem, we've got a sample of 409 where there's 140 successes. From staplet.com, we'll go to one categorical variable single group. And we do not have raw data, which would look like a whole bunch of observations or data that are of the uh, categorical or qualitative nature. What we'd like to do anyway is just summarize that up by how many successes and failures we have. So this is 140 successes. That will leave us with 409 minus 140 failures. So that's 269 failures. Begin analysis, and I always recommend checking to make sure that your total is correct and that you have your successes correct. This relative frequency would be our p hat, our test, uh, the statistic that we will use to find our test statistic. So we're basically saying if we're at 34.2%, how far are we from 0.4%? Now is where we need inference. We'll do a one sample Z test using successes as our success. Sometimes we'll have more specific contextualized information there, like a vote or something like that. And then we'll, like before, we will set it equal to the, we'll set it to the not equal 0.4 to match up with the alternative hypothesis. Be very careful with how it's asking you to enter your information. You might have this set for percentages. And then, when you see percent, you would have to change this to 40. I recommend just setting it to decimals always having it that way and that way we can enter this as proportion 0.4 or 40 percent all right so now i have my test statistic that is z number of standard deviations so essentially my sample is 2.382 standard deviations below the mean and that is a p-value of 0.0172 which compared to alpha is larger. And anytime alpha, anytime the p-value is larger than alpha, we fail to reject the alternative, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we fail to reject, we will not have sufficient evidence. Here, we're going to use the word support for the claim because the claim is H1. So we have a failure to reject right there. Claim of H1, here we say we do not have sufficient evidence to support the claim. Now suppose we have a problem where we need to set it up from the start. For example, on this problem, we're even going back to step one, which we've kind of been skipping so far. So I'll help you out with this first step. First, we need to figure out which null and alternative hypothesis is correct. And we need to start by just looking at the wording here. The claim is that the proportion of people who own cats is different from 90%. So that we'll need to look for that not equal sign and a P. P is not equal to 0.9. This is the only option with that as an alternative hypothesis. We would never put the not equal sign next to H0 because you'll notice every single one of those has some kind of equal sign. In this version, test the claim that the proportion of people who own cats is larger than 70%. We need to look for a greater than 70%. So if I look through these, I see a greater than or equal to. That's not the same. What I need is just a plain old greater than sign with P greater than 0.7. So that will be the correct response there. And then the 
complement of a greater than sign is a less than or equal to sign. Usually we'll just boil that null hypothesis down to the equal sign because that's the part that matters. We have an equal sign and then we either for the alternative go right, left, or both. Now just to finish out this problem, if I were to have a not equal, that would be a two-tailed test. Otherwise, just look at the direction the arrow is pointing for HA or H1, the alternative. This is a right tail. So if P is significantly farther to the right of 0.7 than the margin of error, then we will support that claim. Now on this problem, I wanted to show you how to do it because it is slightly different. Here we have 100 people, 74% own cats. When I go to Staplet, I'm going to have to turn those into numbers. So for one categorical variable single group, I have owned cats and didn't own cats. Maybe they do now, but at the time they didn't. And out of 100 people, 74%. Now this probability is easy because it's 100 people and percent is per 100. But what you would normally do is take your percent times n. So if it was 120 people or 200 people, we could find, or 341 people, we could find the number for any of those based on the 74%. The big thing is we're going to want to make sure we only enter a whole number. So if you do get a decimal, round it to a whole number. For this one, like I said, it's easy. 74% of 100 is 74. And then we need to put the remaining people so you would subtract, like I did in the last problem, to find how many remain. That would be 26 here who don't own cats. And I'll just check my numbers there. Got my total. There's my 74%. And do my one sample Z test with a right tail pointed to the right of 0.7. I have a kind of unremarkable Z score because it's a very close to zero. We, we would want to be uh, two or more standard deviations away to be somewhat more remarkable. And this is only asking for two decimals, so that's 0.87. The p-value of 0.19, which is definitely bigger than alpha. We'll just double check. Alpha is 0.05. That's definitely bigger. So I will fail to reject. And on this one, you don't have to do the entire conclusion. They kind of added a little bit more at the start and took away that last step. But we would say we don't have enough evidence to support that claim that it's more than 